Magnetic Island, located just off the coast of Townsville and slap bang in the middle of the Great Barrier Reef. With over 320 days of sunshine a year, you are basically guaranteed amazing weather for your trip to this beautiful island. My name is Justin. I've just spent the last five days exploring this amazing place. And trust me, I could spend another five days here without a problem. But I'm going to give you all the information you need to know before you come here and tell you absolutely everything you can do whilst you're here. Trust me, this is the most comprehensive guide to Magnetic Island anywhere on the internet and I've got everything from amazing sunrises to absolutely insane sunsets. This is some of the most amazing sunset footage I have ever captured here. Also amazing array of wildlife here, got koalas, rock wallabies, snakes, everything. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss a single second of this video. But to get to Magnetic Island, your trip first has to start in Townsville and there's actually something I recommend you do whilst you're there. So let's wind back to Townsville and then make our way here. Let's go. So to go to Magnetic Island, obviously your trip has to start in Townsville. And while you're here, you might as well come and check out this, which is the Castle Hill Lookout. If you're feeling brave, you can walk up it. It's very steep. So if you have a car, just hop in there and drive up instead. It will be so much easier and you get insane views over all of Townsville. If you come here for sunset as well, you're going to get some insane colours in the sky, which is what we've done today. And uh, you're going to see that now. Right, so to actually get to Magnetic Island, go online and book a ticket via Magnetic Island Ferries. And if you have a car, you can choose to take it with you. If not, you can just go as a foot passenger. With a car, it's about $110 each way. And as a foot passenger, it's $16 each way. So depending on how long you're gonna be staying, it's gonna depend whether it's worth taking your car or not, because car hire on the island starts from about $85. So you have to weigh that up for yourself. It's a 40 minute journey to Magnetic Island. So I'm gonna catch up with you in about 40 minutes when we land. Okay, so now we've arrived in Magnetic Island and you've got two options. You can either just do a day trip here or you can choose to stay overnight. Now, I recommend you do not do a day trip here. There is too much on this island to see and do all in one day. I recommend you come here and do around two nights. Now, accommodation here is going to be more expensive than it is on the mainland, but trust me, it is well worth it. And to get around, there is a bus service that runs, but it's really not that great. Hire a car or if you've got a car, bring it with you because you'll be able to see and do so much more and you'll be able to do it much more quickly. Accommodation wise, I'm staying at a place called Mirror, which is part of the Amaru Resort and it is such a lovely place to stay. I can definitely recommend it. Now we're going to get things started by getting up bright and early tomorrow morning for an amazing sunrise at Hawkins Point Lookout. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Just come here to Hawkins Point Lookout, get to a high nice lookout somewhere nearby and just look out over the water. It's such a calm, soothing experience. The sun just rose up between a little gap in the mountains over there and it's just so peaceful. One of the most popular things to do here on Maggie Island is do the Forts Walk. Now, if you're only coming here for a day, this is something you've got time to do. And it's a four kilometer return. It's gonna be around two hours, they say. But um, yeah, it's going to get pretty steep and it's actually one of the best places on the island to spot wild koalas. And it's actually one of the best places in Australia to spot wild koalas because Magnetic Island has the largest concentration of free roaming koalas in the whole of North Queensland. Now, they were actually brought over here in the 1930s because of threats on the mainland. And they obviously love it because they have gone crazy over here. And yeah, going to go up this walk. Hopefully it doesn't get too steep, but it looks pretty steep already. Yeah, just 10 minutes into the walk and look what we've already spotted just over here. <laughs> yes, that's the first koala bear that I have seen in the wild. Crazy just hanging on there for dear life because it's pretty windy today. Yeah, just 10 minutes in. Hopefully we see a couple more on this route, but uh, let's carry on. There's 
one hell of a hike. You can tell by the state of my shirt, I am sweating, but the views at the top here are amazing. It's definitely well worth it. Whew. Another amazing lookout point to come to is this one. It's called Olympus Lookout. You just drive up the road, park somewhere at the end, walk out and you get this magnificent view just overlooking the rocks and the sea. It's so good. Right, time for some beaches. Now this one is going to be the closest one to the ferry port where you arrive. It's Nelly Bay. Now it's definitely not going to be the nicest one, but it is the closest one, so if you are limited for time or transport, you can come here. It is a massive beach, it goes on for ages, but there are definitely other spots you need to check out as well. Another beach you can come to is this one, it's Picnic Bay. Now, you're gonna to have to get a bus here or drive here, but you can see it's a much more picturesque beach. Some nice rocky features out there in the back and super calm. Some jet skis over here as well, so I guess you can hire those whilst you're here. And there's a pier, so you can watch the end of the pier and get a nice look out over the sea. Magnetic Island is teeming with wildlife and in the corner here of Jeffrey Bay you can come and you can see rock wallabies. Now if you come around five o'clock or after so just before sunset they're all teeming and in and amongst the rocks and you can feed them. There are plenty of shops in the town that sell wallaby food and your hotel probably sells it as well so ask them there and um, let's go feed some wallabies. Such a cool experience feeding these little wallabies here. So make sure if you're coming, if you're coming for just a day, book a later ferry back so you can come and experience this because I don't know where else in the world you can do this. So continuing on the theme of nature and wildlife, another thing you can do while you're here is come to this place, which is the Bungalow Bay Koala Village. And every day they do little sort of tours around and show you different animals in here. I think the tours are 10.30 and 12.30. Cost $40 to come on it, and you get to hold all the different animals and stuff. So we're gonna go on that now, hopefully get up close and personal with a lot of these animals. Let's go. And it's got a nice sharp bill. And it's got a really cool ball-like tongue. Strong and high. Yeah, so he's in the middle of the um. Right, that was a super cool experience getting to hold and touch all these different animals holding a snake around my neck and then also getting to pet the koala right at the end such a cool experience definitely got to come and do this while you're here on magnetic island so i'm gonna head out of here now go and explore some more let's go This type of thing is exactly why I think you need more than just one day here because there's so many cool little bays like this to just explore. And just over there behind me is the shipwreck of the SS City of Adelaide. Now that was a boat that was launched in 1863 just from near where I live actually in Scotland. And uh, it spent a long time as an Australian passenger ship and then it crashed here 
1916 and it's been sat here ever since and you can see it's a bit overtaken by some trees and stuff so we're going to send the drone out now and see what it looks like So unfortunately not everybody's gonna have a drone to be able to go and get the views like that. But if you wanna walk up closer to it, at low tide, you can actually walk out. You'll get wet legs still because there's not a completely like out of the water path. But if you wanna get up close and personal with a shipwreck, you can do so during low tide. So go check it out if that's something you're into. I have found my favorite bay on the island so far. This is Alma Bay and it is absolutely stunning. It's just like, the picturesque perfect kind of bay you've got the rocks on either side the beach in the middle it's pretty windy today so the waves are pretty choppy but still it's such a nice bay you've got to come to this place when you visit magnetic island and i'm just going to perch on the rocks for a minute and talk to you a little bit more about some of the other bays around here all right so magnetic island is littered with amazing bays scattered all around the edge of it but to get some of them, you do need a four-wheel drive vehicle. Although you can hire them on the island, a lot of them won't let you take them to some of the specific points like Radical Bay and West Point. It's because West Point Road and Radical Bay Road are both out of bounds. They're also pretty bad roads, so there's a reason why you're not allowed to go down them. Radical Bay Road is actually closed a lot of the time as well, so you can't get down it anyway. You can actually walk to Arthur Bay, which is a long Radical Bay Road. It's only about a kilometer each way from the car park. But going to West Point is probably going to be out of the question because it's an 11 kilometer walk each way. So unless you're feeling brave, mad or a little bit crazy, you're probably going to skip that one and just carry on enjoying the bays that are more accessible. Like this one here, Alma Bay, super stunning. So just get out your beach mat, lay down and just soak in the sun. Such a nice place. So if you're on the island and you don't have a car or you don't want to get the bus, another good way to get around sort of Nelly Bay and Arcadia is to just get on one of these beam scooters. Just download the app, super simple, super easy. You can use my uh, code down below and it'll give you a little bit off your first ride too. And uh, yeah, just check them out and you can go scooting up and down. It saves you walking around in the heat because the sun here is so intense. Okay, welcome to Horseshoe Bay. Now the plan was initially to come here, hire a kayak for sunset, row out into the ocean and view the sunset from there. But unfortunately, all the places that hire them out appear to either be closed or just not answering their phone because I'm struggling to get anything done here. So instead, just gonna settle down and enjoy the sunset here. It's gonna be a lovely place to watch it anyway, and it's a really nice beach. It's towards the top end of the island. So if you come in here, make sure to come and check this place out as well. Hopefully you'll have more luck than I did if you wanna book a kayak. But anyway, just gonna settle down now and watch the sun go down. There's always something just so relaxing about watching a sunset on the beach. I think it's a combination of like being sat on the sand, hearing the waves crashing gently and just sort of watching the day slowly come into an end. It's so relaxing and such a good vibe. One you must experience whilst you're here on Magnetic Island as well. Amazing. Okay, here's a little bonus. The hotel that we're staying in just outside there Rock wallabies keep coming up, so I've been feeding them a few apple chips. I've made some more. Let's go outside and feed them some more. <laughs> 
During the week on Magnetic Island, different events happen in different places. And on Sunday, there's actually a Sunday market, which finishes around two o'clock. But at one of the local pubs in the town, they have different events on. And Wednesday night is races night, but we're not racing horses. We're racing cane toads. <laughs> this is gonna be ridiculous. Let's go and see what's going on. <laughs> Toad races been running for over 40 years. Um, okay, so how it works, so you're going to show us all the different toads, then you toad. bid on them. It's all for charity, so it's all a good cause. So Let's see all the fresh. different toads and see what's going on. Okay, Paul's going to give you a quick demonstration of this toad's form tonight. <laughs> 120 over here, and he raised on 120. $300 prize money, ladies and gentlemen. 120 over here. Going once. Going twice. 120 over here now, and sold. Almost time for the madness to start. <laughs> and racing. <laughs> and racing. <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. just absolutely ridiculous if you're coming to maggie island make sure to time your trip around on wednesday you've got to come and check this out absolutely crazy so magnetic island is definitely somewhere that you should be adding to your australia travel itinerary i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope i've given you all the information you've needed i'm pretty sure i did and i hope it has been entertaining as well this island really does give me some of the sort of vibe to like koh tao in thailand i've been there as well and made a video i'll link that at the end of this one if you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it or if you just like koalas and rock wallabies make sure to smash the like button down below and subscribe to up state with all of my future content i have got some absolutely insane videos coming up you definitely are not going to want to miss that make sure you're subscribed for all of my regular viewers i'm now going to go into a little clip of wallerman falls which is australia's largest single drop waterfall something i visited on the way here and i'll roll into that apart from that Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Are you ready for this? The largest single drop waterfall in Australia. Woo! I don't think this video is going to do it justice, but that is enormous. insane.